welcome to our study session at 6 o'clock on August 18th. Our study session um, tonight, we're going to consider or hear from the town manager and staff and discuss work plans and reporting out of progress on various goals that we've set and other matters, I believe. Mr. White? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to present to you just a brief overview because mainly what I want to do is give you time to ask questions about uh, projects that you see in the work plan. Uh, I'll be focusing on what, uh, what you have done and what you are doing. Uh, later in the session, uh, Laurel will be speaking to uh, and uh, taking you through what has been proposed in the way of strategic goals for 2015-2017. So the focus that I have is on uh, the past and the current. So we've, we've given you uh, uh, what we have termed as work plans. The work plans uh, are not something you actually ask for, but we thought it'd be a good idea to present to you uh, some of the major projects that you've approved through strategic goals and during the course of the year, plus projects that uh, administrative staff uh, approve as well, so that you see a snapshot of the 20, 30 percent of work that's capsulized in the form of projects. Probably 70, 80 percent of it, when you look at the work plans, shows under activities where it indicates all of the day-to-day -day things that go on within departments. Uh, in the uh, report that I gave you, we indicate some of the uh, important aspects from our perspective of what the work plan is intended to do. Uh, I'll just highlight a couple of those. One thing uh, that we did hope for is it helps the council and staff to look at workload, keep it manageable. It helps the council to have a real snapshot of things that you've authorized that sometimes you don't get to see again until you hear about it through the grapevine, and so this is a way for you to kind of see what may be going on in a few cases, what may not be going on, uh, that have been identified in the work plan by departments. We've organized the uh, work plan into three sections. One uh, is the uh, strategic goals that you approved last year, are the strategic goals you approved last year. Secondly, We've organized some of these under boards, commissions, and committees where we've shown some projects that they're working on. And in some cases, one of their projects is that they're developing a work plan. And uh, that will uh, raise a question that Laurel will be addressing uh, in the uh, second session. And then we have the key department and division projects, which uh, is any number of items that you have uh, seen in these various sections. So with that, um, I would uh, ask you to go to attachment one. And on attachment one, we show projects from 2014, 2016 that have been completed, are in progress, pending council action, and one case on hold. And um, I don't intend to go through each of these, but I would uh, uh, ask the council if you have any questions on any of these that you'd like to direct to staff. Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I do, so I'll just jump right in there. Um, under the column quality public infrastructure, there is, quote, develop implementation plan for complete streets says on hold. My question is, why? Thank you, Council Member, uh, Mayor uh, Jensen, Matt Morley, Director of Parks and Public Works. Uh, that particular item was on hold. We did some initial elements of green streets in, with the green bike lanes, uh, and that was a, a part of that entire implementation. We have not. We need to develop a, a larger green streets program and move that forward. And we don't have the resources at this point to be able to do that. Uh, but we'd be anxious to to get to that and be able to include it in the future. So it's money is the answer. Yeah, Correct. Money and staff time both. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, one of the 
uh, boxes says, develop a strategic plan for the library fall of 2015. Um, I know that the policy committee has, uh, has been talking about coming up with a use of the library uh, policy, but I don't know what a strategic plan for the library is or why we have it. So for us, this is how we develop our programs and collections. And so we try to coordinate with community members, library board, friends of the library to see. We can't obviously do every program, right? So where do we want to put our money? What programs do we want to do? Um, so it's really a service delivery for us in regards to program expenditures. Other questions? Councilwoman Sayak. Um, following up on that, when there is a specific time frame, such as fall 2015 for the library, does that mean when you plan to begin it or when, it, when you anticipate its completion? This would be the anticipated completion date, so we come up with our five service responses. Okay, and then a follow-up to that, Madam Mayor. Does that mean those that have anticipated dates are closer towards completion than those that are simply, say, in progress? That a question for was that a question specific to the library or oh, no, no, I think that's a general I think that's a general question uh, I think uh, well this is a work in progress in some cases we say in progress other cases we've put in specific dates and that's something we have to work on so that would be one of the reporting items that you'd want us to discuss with you and tell you how we'd like it reported Yes, yeah, so as, as you go through this, it's really important to have your feedback about what you think is missing, what you'd like to see, whether you even want this done or not. Um, we took the initiative of trying to frame this for you by departments in terms of projects that are substantive, that many of which councils approved. Uh, and we took a shot at trying to get some consistency on dates, but in some cases we've got dates, some cases we say in progress, and that's the kind of feedback we'd need. Okay. So I have, I guess, two other questions, one specific, one general. Uh, develop technology priorities, and my question is, and it says in progress, what is a technology priority? Is that a... Uh... It's under good governance. I don't see our HR person who oversees must IT. Not be a but that, must not be a priority. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that um, what we're looking for uh, is that uh, we are trying to develop an IT plan. Within that, we have a number of various project priorities, but they're not shown here. Okay. This is just a snapshot of that. And uh, if you look under... Uh, HR in the IT section that is identified a little more specifically there in terms of some of the elements that would go into it. Okay, thank you. My general question is, if there is, for lack of a better term, a box on this chart or something that's in the work plan that says in progress, and the council were to determine that it did not want to go forward with that program, is council able to terminate it? If it's in progress, or and if so, how do we do that? Uh, if you were of the mind that something should go shouldn't go forward, uh, then we could explain why we have it in there, and then you could say the council could say you still don't want it to go forward, and then that would probably be one that we would just drop because we have enough projects to do. So that would be something that we would take up in our uh, meeting, public meeting discussion of the strategic goals. Correct? Yes. Okay. Other questions on the work plans um, or the chart? Councilwoman Sayak. So um, understanding that th these priorities and goals can change, what would be helpful as we move to the next part of our discussion is how far along in progress you are. Right. And I think a number of these will occur as you look at each department. Right. And in a number of them, they are, there will be dates that will say who it's assigned to. But if you see 
something where you think uh, we need to have more information or we're missing a date, just mention that. And as I said, uh, and I'd want to repeat this because we went through a number of iterations trying to refine this and we kept getting a little bit better and a little bit better, but we never probably quite got there. And so it may take one more uh, time through this or a couple of times through to really get those projects uh, honed down. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Other, other general questions about this? Councilman Rennie, would you use your hand up? So how would you now, given that we've, we haven't given you a whole lot of feedback on that generalized thing, how would you like us to proceed or how do you want to yes. proceed through the rest well, of your what presentation? What I'd like to do is, uh, you've kind of seen the strategic goals up on the front sheet. If you go to page five, uh, there are two items that uh, are shown here that uh, should be shown and are shown under the proposed strategic goals. And in fact, the council knows we're working on both of those as indicated in our working calendar. And that's on revenue sources and capital project funding. Those will be going back to you on September 15th, but they should not have been uh, shown here under the existing strategic uh, goals. So I'd want to clarify that. And then the business license amnesty pr program uh, that's a proposal and that uh, uh, should not be in this particular section either and that was just a miss on my part. If you then go from that section, I would uh, suggest you go to um, the section right after page eight called boards, commissions, and committees. We'll talk, uh, we'll go through this one briefly and then we can go through the uh, projects by department, and I'll just mention the department, and if you have questions within the department, you can raise those. Under the boards, commissions, and committees, you'll see a variety of uh, responses ranging from uh, the Arts and Cultural Commission speaking to uh, doing an art plan, a strategic plan uh, that they're working on. You'll see that uh, the project lead on that is uh, uh, Christina Gilmore and that other departments involved are uh, the Los Gatos uh, rec folks. And so the projects are kind of listed uh, in that fashion by boards and commissions. And we're trying to identify those for you because a lot of work emanates from boards and commissions. And uh, sometimes you may get something done by a board or commission like you do by staff sometimes where you say, I'm not sure we want to do that. Um, and I, I think that uh, a couple of years ago, you used to have work plans from boards and commissions, and that's something that uh, we can either speak to now or speak to in the later session uh, as a, a policy that you might want to reinstitute or not. Uh, we think it would be a good idea to see that work uh, because there's a lot of work that goes to the departments directly from boards and commissions that um, may not even be uh, on your uh, screen, so to speak. So are you looking for our feedback so now, now on the question of whether or not, as I understand your presentation, whether the council wants to, well, since in I'm, effect, pre-approve work being done by boards and commissions, or do you want well, that to be discussed at a different time? Since I've introduced it here, you could go ahead and, and respond to that. Okay. Here. Any comments or questions on that, Vice Mayor? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just uh, for a little bit of context, uh, there were many years when the council uh, would meet with uh, all of the commissions, um, and the format changed and the location changed, but just say generally it was in here, and the council would sit at the table and all the commissions would be out in the audience and they would come up uh, one group at a time and we would say, uh, how are you doing, what are you doing, and, and we would chat. And then my impression uh, was that uh, it was uh, not a productive, um, not a productive event. And it eventually went by the wayside uh, and then one year when we were then meeting at the um, police officers building, um, I, I asked each commission 
to come up with one achievable thing for the year. And quite frankly, I don't know if that happened either. So I guess my point is that various scenarios have been attempted. I have not seen any that has been effective and successful. Other com Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the one we're proposing would be basically for the boards and commissions to submit something like this to the council once a year at least to say these are the major things they're anticipating doing, which helps then uh, for staff to estimate the kind of work they're going to be involved in and for you to see what they may be doing. Uh, at the time you could, when you got those, you could have a presentation from the chair of the board or commission on the work plans that they have. Um, that was what we were thinking about with this model. And in fact, uh, that's being done as a planning tool in large measure in Parks and Public Works where the staff there is working with Transportation Parking Commission, Parks Commission, um, and uh, the uh, Bicycle uh, Committee to formulate work plans with different items in them. Other comments? Oh, Vice Mayor, I'll let you follow up. Yes, it is. Well, thank you. Uh, it seems that one thing we might want to consider is when we get these uh, work plans, uh, whether or not it's simply informational and the council just accepts that the committee or commission is going to go forward and do it, or, and this might be my inclination, that the council weighs in on if this is something that it wants to go forward. The purpose of bringing it to the council would be to do the latter as, as well as be informed in the former, but to have an ability to see that, to say, well, that may not be something that if you do it, that we're going to necessarily act on, particularly given all of the other things that are going on. You want to add anything to that, Laurel? Because I'm stealing your presentation from later. Okay. Let's see if we have other comments first. Uh, Councilman Rennie. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, there, you know, I went through and I made a couple of them that I, I highlighted that I thought um, were really good things to do, and I just maybe wanted to give a little bit of feedback what I liked. Um, the Community Services Senior Needs Assessment, I really like that. I think, you know, I think a lot about what, you know, how can we help seniors in town and what should we do? And I'm not quite to senior age yet, so I assume a lot. And I think it would, and I think a lot of people assume a lot when they talk about seniors. Well, they don't want stairs; they're going to want elevators. Well, I know seniors that do want stairs. So I think it, I think getting in it, um, it talks about doing a survey. I assume we're talking to seniors. So I think I really like the idea of that, so we can understand better what do what how can we really serve seniors better in the community. Um, and then. Let me, and may I give you a brief comment on that? Because sure. I believe that one is done and ready to uh, be taken back to council. Christina can mention that to you quickly. That is correct. So the Community and Senior Services uh, Needs Assessment was a direction from the council in 2013 for the CSSE to conduct that survey. That survey has been completed. The staff report is complete. We've just been waiting for a time to schedule it to bring it forward to council for their review. So whenever council is prepared to receive that report, we'll be happy to provide it to you. Before I call on the vice mayor, let me see if there's follow-up with Councilman Rennie, were you? Um, that's okay, I have a couple others, but I can okay. take turns. Okay, vice mayor. Thank you, uh, actually the uh, needs assessment, when we were, uh, when the staff suggested that the council uh, consider uh, listing 10 priorities, um, the senior needs assessment was one of mine, uh, but I also understand that it is completed, and I understood that it was coming to the council uh, on August, August in August. So I thought it was on its way. So uh, it is something that I think is important, but my misunderstanding was that I think it, I thought it was actually on its way to the council. Well, it probably was until we put other things like the strategic <laughs> goals on the uh, uh, calendar. And the intention would be as soon as there's a gap and we talk to the mayor about the agendas, is to plug that in. So it'd probably be in maybe September, early October. 
Councilman Rennie, do you want to follow up with your other items? Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. I also put an asterisk next to the Historic Preservation Committee's um, discussion of, of historic demolition penalties. We saw one of those questions come before us, and I, although I had to recuse myself for that one, I think the council struggled quite a bit with how much the penalty was and so forth. So to me, that seems like another good one to make sure that we get through. Any other questions on the board commission committee section? I have a comment, but Councilwoman Sayak. Okay, so I'm, I'm still trying to understand the process moving forward. So let me use the Arts Commission as an example. So the Art Commission will begin the Art Plan strategic planning process in August. Is the Art Plan going to be based on the core values or priorities that we decide tonight? Or, like, for example, one of the uh, goals that we've identified was partner with the Veterans Committee. And I, I do know that they have worked actively on that. But would that be in their work plan to continue their efforts to do that? Or is this completely separate from, are they looking at creating items that are separate from what um, is what we, what we expect of them? Correct. So thank you for the question. So the Arts Commission had an adopted arts plan, uh, work plan, that was adopted in 2011. It was to run through 2013. And so obviously that plan has been expired for several years. And so the, com the commission has, their intention is to review that plan, to understand what projects were on that original arts plan that still might be carried forward. For example, the Forbes Mill Footbridge art uh, installation project. Um, and then identify other potential projects that the Art Commission would like to bring forward to the Council for their review and consideration and approval. So the Arts Plan pending Council direction tonight or future Council action could um, reflect the priorities that the Council has set forward for the town or the council can um, allow the Arts Commission to move forward with some strategic planning and goal identification and bring that back to the council at a later date for their consideration and approval. So with both the Arts and Culture Commission as well as the Community Services, with the plans as well as the needs assessment, would there be dollar values attached to it? So for the community services needs assessment, they conducted a survey of local um, providers that provide services to adults um, in Los Gatos, town of Los Gatos. And so their survey um, identifies service need area gaps. And so they ha will have a series of recommendations to the council for their consideration. Some of them may have um, price tags attached to it, um, depending upon the council priorities. So it just really depends. But they have, they, I think they have at least three to four recommendations and they've sort of tiered it to um, some maybe just repackaging how information is made available to seniors all the way up to having a dedicated senior center in the town of Los Gatos. So they have a series of recommendations for council's uh, discussion and consideration. What a specific suggestion that would be helpful for me at least is as they think through these plans and needs to identify some financial numbers attached to it. I know when we were having the budgetary discussion, the, at least with the grants, there were more grants than actual resources. And so I was uncomfortable making those grants at the end of the, of the budget cycle, but it would be helpful up front to know how much they anticipate in financial need so that that process would be something that they could look at in totality as they move forward. So we need to consider that in, in terms of uh, direction back to boards and commissions for them to identify different uh, work items, priorities, and some costs as well. So I'll, I'll make a comment, um, a general comment, then down to more specific. I think it's important that the boards and commissions come up with independent ideas. They are, they are there in part to do that and in part to advise us. So I'm not comfortable with pre-approving necessarily a plan. However, it makes sense to tell somebody if they're completely off base, and it makes sense to be flexible. So I'm happy to 
have somebody come and say, we accept it. I agree with the vice mayor that the meetings that she described, that I, those that I participated in, were not helpful or valuable, uh, either as a council person or as a planning commissioner. Um, so if we can get a plan that comes to us that's proposed and we can say yes or no, that would be good. Now, going to Councilwoman Sayhawk's comments, when we do get a commission that is coming up with plans that are, are now going to need to be funded by the town, either by a grant or a budget item, then it seems to me that clearly the council has to say, yeah, we're okay with that or, or not, because three years later we get presented with something, and if we say, gosh, we didn't really want that, then it's bad all around. So at some point we're going to have to be deciding that, and particularly with the grants, we can't make it a budget assumption that we're going to get a gift or we're going to get an award or we're going to get whatever without the council saying, okay, go forth, you know, and instead of having that come back at us, basically we've already spent the money and us having to do something. So my two cents would be, yes, I think there's some level of acceptance that has to go on, but as it gets to the point where it's asking for a particular commitment and we haven't seen it and it keeps going, then we need to look at that acceptance much sooner than the pike. Other comments regarding this subject matter? Okay, so we can go on to the department presentations. Right, so if you go to uh, page 15, that uh, starts with department projects, program initiatives uh, t with the town manager's office. And so are there any questions on town manager's office? Vice Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I may be flipping through this quickly. Is Do you consider the clerk administrator part of the town manager's office? Uh, yes, it is part of the uh, town manager's office. Okay. So what I noticed there uh, was that there were, under status and comments, that there were several items uh, that had not uh, been completed or started. Uh, and I was wondering if there was some issue there that we needed to discuss. Could you give us a page reference, please? Seven, 17. Thank you. Is there a particular item that you? All right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Web access, the second one. Uh, and it says um, investigated and, and staff time to implement the next one down, uh, two boxes down. It says limited progress due to staff constraints, two down from that, not started. Uh, so uh, are the, I mean, what's the issue? Are the goals too uh, bold? Do we have to, you know, bring these in? I mean, I don't know. These are items that the town really should be completing. We've identified them as things that need to happen, but we just are very leanly staffed in our clerk administrator's office. We have one full-time person, and most of our staff resources go to the agenda process, handling um, town council reports, public records requests, et cetera. So the ongoing day-to-day -day activity is um, is quite voluminous, and so we haven't had the ability to complete these. In other cases, we may need um, a budget augmentation in order to invest in some web upgrades in order to, for example, make our ordinances and resolutions uh, public facing onto our website, which is something we would all love to do. It would help our public access our records, but again, it takes um, a monetary decision. So we don't want to lose sight of these projects because they are important to the town, but we, we are recognizing the resource constraints. Thank you. Councilman Leonardis. Thank you, Mayor Jensen. Looking at, let's just pick the first uh, box on page 15, and it says extend the current agreement uh, for Los Gatos Music and Arts, enter into negotiations with Los Gatos Music and Arts for a new five-year agreement. Are we limited by what is in that box? Or say if we wanted to add a bullet that said issue RFP for um, 
music programs in Los Gatos. Um, do we have to add that now? Uh, well, this one uh, may change. Uh, this depends on uh, what uh, uh, the intention is of the current providers of that service, and uh, it appears as though there may be uh, that there most likely will be uh, uh, a change uh, that would then open the door to either continuing this with someone else or doing some other kinds of events. Uh, I gave you uh, the council in the town manager's report just a bit of a, a preamble on that one saying that, uh, that this may be subject to some changes uh, and I'm, I'm sounding hesitant because at the same time there hasn't been a formal announcement that's come out. So for clarification, um, what is in these boxes is subject to change. We're not held hard and fast. All to of these things are, these are fluid. I mean, they're projects that as you turn the page, one of them may have changed. And that's why we need to keep them up to date with you uh, at least a couple of times a year, which is one of the things we said. Uh, but yes, they are subject to change. Thank you. And Mr. White, most if not all of these are contained in a suggestion or a box in our for our strategic goals discussion in one way or the other, are they not? So there's a discussion about use of civic center property, there's discussion about special events, there's discussion about closing streets, et cetera, et cetera. Wouldn't those, don't all of these essentially fall into our later discussion? Uh, some of them some do, fashion. but if you look at something like department work plans, that was one that uh, is not in your strategic goal discussion. Uh, Cross-training of all clerk department personnel. There are different projects that are going on within the departments that we want to make you aware of, let you ask questions about. And then uh, it does include uh, in virtually all the departments your current strategic goals. So, any other questions about the town, man town manager's office projects? Councilman Rennie. There is the economic vitality section, too, in, in uh, this area. It's, uh, we kind of show clerk administrator economic vitality. And then after that, we show town manager ongoing activities, clerk administrator ongoing activities, economic vitality ongoing activities. So if there are any questions on 18 about economic vitality, Monica is here well, and raring to go. Let me ask, uh, recognize Councilman Rennie first. Thank you, I'll Madam say. Mayor. So I, this may seem like we're going backwards, but I had some questions on pages, I think, two, three, so forth. And when I look at those, I think those are supposed to be the same ones that were on our chart, but they don't all line up for me. So, like, some of them seem like they're, there's some things on page two that I don't find on the chart, and then I had some questions. So I don't know if I'm out of order by backing us up, but I do have some questions there. Tell us what you see that's, and when you say the chart, you mean the boxes, uh, the attachment, strategic goals? The, the attachment one chart that we looked at yes. first seems to be sort of covered, but there seems to be extra things in so attachment I think, two, page two, I think two, we'll three. invite your comments or questions on what you think is not there and maybe should be. Okay, thank you. So, um, the, I guess the first one was there, it says, it talks about develop plan to enhance the aesthetics and use of the Civic Center as a community resource. Is that a strategic goal that was assigned somewhere? It says it came from the policy committee, but it, staff was direction by the policy committee, but is that really a strategic goal that's already won? Yes, it is. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I can tell you as a member of the policy committee that what was coming up is we okay. found, as with many things, that we did not have any policy directing how the Civic Center or library or prop town property was to be used. And we did have a Civic Center master plan. So the policy committee was looking into what policies existed or didn't and what needed to be developed. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And my recollection is, yes, the policy committee did uh, raise the issue during in the past year. But the, um, the goal of uh, revisiting the uh, Civic Center plan predated the policy committee. And so my thought would be that as it exists on 
the strategic goals, it was not necessarily the policy committee, but a predated uh, objective. And I agree. Uh, what else, Councilman Rennie? Okay, thank you. I, so I have a question. This one may be on this chart somewhere, but I wanted to ask about it. Um, it's called Facilitate Privately Led Effort to Address Options for Downtown Parking. And then it talks a lot about meeting with participants who weren't interested and then year-round in valet parking, not interested. My question is, is this finished or is it still ongoing? This is still something that's ongoing with the parking ad hoc committee. Um, the comments that you're referring to that I believe were from an attachment from this evening's agenda, um, those were things that when the parking assessment district sunsetted, we held a meeting with some businesses and property owners in town to see if there was interest in continuing the assessment district. And those were comments that came out of some of those reports from the meetings. Okay, so it's still ongoing. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yes, please. One more. So there's one called home occupation. Um, what What is that? And is that also on the other chart somewhere? Yes, it's on attachment one. It was one of the 2014 to 2016 strategic goals. And it's an item that we intend to complete this fall in 2015 when we have a management intern working for community development. Okay, thank you. That's That's all for... This section. Thank you. Councilwoman Sayak. Okay, so um, I'm looking at page 17, which is basically the records. Um, and uh, so basically, a lot of these things, what would be helpful for me, I, I noticed all of the things that were not complete. Um, and what I needed to know was, uh, it sounds like it's a matter of budget and resources. Is this something that would be a high workload, a low workload? And the reason why I ask is I see this as one of the good governance goals that we should probably be striving towards to make sure that all our town policies are all easily accessible and available to our residents. And so um, in preparation for the later discussion, it would help me to know how much of a workload are we anticipating, whether it's high, medium, or unknown still? Right, so each one has its own workload and resource needs. The um, being able to digitize all of our essential town records would require um, a staff person to probably work full time for a few months to get all of those completed. And I'm looking to Shelley for a more precise. Estimate. So checking with um, other jurisdictions that have gone through the same thing with the amount of records that we have that still need to be digitized, it can take um, up to a year, one full time person doing it. And web access, we've been looking at a module um, to do that. I think that's about a $20,000 expense, as I it's recall. It's about 19000 for the startup, and then there are yearly um, subscription costs to keep it going. And then the retention policies, that's something that we would do internally. Uh, it's just a matter of carving out the time for the directors and the town attorney to determine whether or not we need to update and refresh our retention policies. So that would be internal, no additional uh, management of the records itself. That is something that each department really is responsible for and is overseen by the clerk administrator. Uh, we have a little bit of unevenness uh, within the town. And so again, it's a matter of having the leadership to really see that through. Um, and I think it's really a matter of just prioritizing the work of our clerk administrator. Cross-training is underway, and then preservation of our records um, that I believe we do have a technology we've identified. I can't recall the cost. Um, we do, and it's about $2,500 for a book. So each one of our books that we have the records in now, they take one at a time, and it takes them two to three months to um, deacidify de them and put them back in records. So it's about $2,500 a book. And we have probably upwards of 50 or more books to do. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Since we've circled back to this and having listened to um, uh, both the staff people speak, it seems to me that as a matter of process or planning, uh, each of these 
uh, action items needs to be quantified, and, and it sounds as though it is. And then from quantifying, uh, it needs to get a budget, uh, and then we would need, and we council would need input from staff as to, uh, yes, we understand it's going to take this much time, we understand it's going to take this much money, but we recommend it right now, next month, next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. And in some cases, uh, and I know this uh, doesn't give you much of a picture, we were trying to identify the project, first of all, and just get it listed. And there were a number of these in the records area that are often ignored. Virtually every uh, city I've worked in, this has always been a low priority until there's all kinds of problems in, in terms of finding things in your documents and ending up with rooms full of, uh, of paper documents. So uh, getting it down here will then lead to uh, getting it, it further uh, analyzed and uh, plans put together on them. And we do welcome any priority setting. So among, so for example, as you look at say just clerk administrator since we're talking about it, if you have a sense of one project is a higher priority than another, we would certainly welcome those uh, comments as well. That what may help us in future budgeting uh, proposals for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Peretti. I'm trying to figure out for myself, I don't know if other people are having this difficulty, in separating telling you what we want for priorities in this study session versus telling you what we want for priorities in our actual public meeting. So I, I at least am having trouble going through this and saying, well, X, Y, Z, because we're going to have a public meeting on it. So I don't know if other people are struggling with that. I, I, would, I would suggest that for purposes of this part, it's mainly asking questions that the priorities can be dealt with at a subsequent time, but it's primarily just to let you see the projects and ask a question about them. So before we ask more questions, let me just, looking at the time, I see people in the audience. Do any of you want to talk to us? We do have a time for verbal communications on study, for the study session. If you do not, we will go all the way till about 10 of 6, or depending on how many questions we have. Okay? All right. Any other questions on the town manager function, or department, let's call it? Next would be town attorney on page 23. Anything for Mr. Schultz? Nothing on. Okay. Unless you want to tell us something that you think we need to know. No, just to, as, as a town manager mentioned, this is such a work in progress. Things prop up all the time. All of these listed are probably state mandates that we have to update that are listed. The one that's not on here is the one that's coming to you about the overcrowding of schools. It'll be on the September 1st. So that's not even on here, and it's something that I'm currently working on. So most of mine are state mandated ordinances that have to be done. On page 25, are, are you ready to move forward? Yes, uh, uh, community page, developments, and Ms. Prevetti. Page 25, community development. We're available if you have any questions. Okay. Questions on Vice Mayor? Uh, yes, thank you. Clarification. Uh, I was just looking, for example, at uh, general plan action items, 139 items yet to implement. And then I saw implementing at two or three per year. So if each one relates to the other, that's 45 years. So am I missing something? Well, again, we have plans that have action items, and we want it to, we don't want to lose track of all the action items. Same thing for the sustainability plan. The housing element is very action-oriented, and since the state um, expects an annual report, we have a timeline and a work plan to get those done. But to the extent the council would like us to essentially develop a work plan just of the general plan action items or just of the sustainability plan action items, we're happy to do so. We just wanted to capture the magnitude of those items. Um, there's, there are a lot of great ideas. Some of them are things that we can just incorporate into our business practices as the town does its general business, but there are other things that might require new ordinances or new policies for council consideration, and those take work. I have a follow-up on that question. So the 139 that you identified 
I don't I don't know where you got the 139. Are, are we talking about there's general plan things that we need action items that we think we might contemplate at one time. There's general plan action items that are implicated by a sustainability plan that you might develop, or you're thinking that there might be 139 out there, or are there 139 out there? There are 139. When we updated our general plan, we identified goals, policies, and action items. The action items are all numbered, and so we just looked at what, what of those we've accomplished and added them up. Okay, so now I understand. It's the action items that are identified in the general plan, not a general plan amendment. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. Other questions on CDD? Page uh, 29 and 30. 30 is finance department. Anything the finance department wants to highlight? If not, questions from council? Okay. Page 37, Human Resources and uh, IT. I don't see any questions. There is a question, Councilman Leonardis. Thank you, Mayor Jansen. Um, just looking at this, was wondering if body cameras would be something that would be considered in this category for our officers. Uh, the officers have body cameras. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. On page 43, library. One of the things as you go through, you might see occasionally something in here that looks like an ongoing activity and that needs to be moved out. We were still ferreting out some of those. If no questions there. Okay, Parks and Public Works. 49, Parks and Public Works. I'm not seeing any questions. I would cite, for example, that we did add, we add some things in, like on page 53, we show cut through traffic uh, under public works. It actually should probably say under other departments, partners, the police department and town manager's office, a couple of others. But the important thing was to get that in here as a, because there's been some work put into that. Okay. Page. Uh, yes. Oh. Councilman Rennie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask one question. So I noticed on the Parks and Public Works that the Farmer's Market RFP uh, our agreement has expired, and then earlier we talked about doing an assessment of the, of the Farmer's Market and whether we should change it or, or not, and I was wondering where that idea came from. Do, do we think the Farmer's Market uh, is getting old and stale, or is it just because the agreement's ended we thought we'd do a complete review? Uh, it's because the agreement has ended. Uh, there's been no discussion about uh, uh, getting rid of the farmer's market at all. Yeah, so it's the agreement. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, Councilwoman Sayak. So using that as an example, um, is the agreement over? Are we, like, is there a deadline that we need to be working towards with the farmer's market? <laughs> There's been about three or four agreements that have been over that we, uh, um, one of the things we should add under clerk is a tickler system on contracts and agreements because we've had some that we've missed and uh, um, I, I don't know, what, what's the anticipated time of getting to that? So our, our intent is to bring an RFP forward to the council for review so that can, you could review the document ahead of us putting it out and then uh, doing that later this year. Uh, to be able to to bring a, a vendor on to provide future services for for the farmers market um, And um, Mr. White your idea of a tickler for when contracts then I think that'd be an excellent idea. I think so too after going through a few of them <laughs> okay. on. Uh, Vice mayor Thank you. I I mean having uh, 
not only the farmer's market, but other agreements that I've become aware of this year that they are, have terminated or that we've learned about that exist or don't exist in the policy committee, I would add to my top 10 things the tickler system. I think that's really important. Other comments or questions on this department? Okay, police department. Page 56, police department. I guess I did that with the body cameras. Um, community services. And I guess I wonder how parking and traffic on page 58 is different than police or PPW. There are multiple divisions within the police department uh, work plan, so those are subheadings under police. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. You probably didn't get a whole heck of a lot of uh, direction from us. Well, I, I, it, you can give the comments back to staff on it. I think the important thing is to know whether you believe this is a worthwhile exercise because it does need refinement, does need uh, more detail. It, the, the value of it is that it, it's not just for council, but it also uh, compels departments to make sure that they are looking at the projects jointly and understand uh, and project out timelines on the projects for you to see. The intention was to bring this in a couple of times a year, one time uh, around July and the other at the end of the calendar year. Uh, and if developed properly, it can be used to roll up completed projects and help even say to the community here are some of the accomplishments during the calendar year. That's all the comments I have, uh, if you have any questions. Councilman Rennie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I guess I, maybe I have a comment. So when I was reading through these, I couldn't get a sense of whether certain departments were kind of overloaded or underloaded in, in projects. Like I was going to say something about library. It seemed like I thought the library staff's kind of small, but there was a really long list. So I was, you know, when I see that, I start thinking, well, should we as council help you maybe take some things off the list so you get to the most important? If the department is, you know, right-sized or undersized with the number of projects, there's probably no pro problem they can get it all done. Yes. Um, I can only give you my impression, and some of the departments that I don't mention won't like my impression, but I believe the two that are most impacted are the ones that have the, uh, the most projects that are pushed in their direction, and that's Parks, Public Works, and Community Development. Uh, because of the heavy project workload. Uh, I do know that uh, that the new library director does have an ambitious program and a number of uh, projects there. Uh, and uh, I, I'm presuming that most of the departments that have uh, laid out what they're working on uh, feel it's doable if they can have time to program these and have some priorities, which most of them attempt to do. But, the, the two that I've seen most impacted have been those two departments, partly because they've had the mo some of the most difficult times filling critical planning and engineering positions, because those are in high demand in the valley, uh, and that has caused some projects to be delayed. And when you look at CDD and Parks and Public Works, you might see some slippage on projects because of that in part. Um, that's just a, uh, a general observation. Uh, I can make that because before the department heads can get to me, I'll be out of here. <laughs> Very clever. Um, I'm going to wrap up our study session and, let, and uh, remind the council that you can give further input to the staff um, and you know where to find them. And we will take a little break before we start our meeting at 7. <laughs> 